What's up YouTube? It's Coach Corey and today I got a pushing tips video for you guys. That was about time I do a pushing tips video. I've been top 25 for the past couple weeks, past month. I'm almost at 11,000 trophies. So I wanted to give you guys some of my best tips. And the best tip I always give in pushing trophies is to play the best specific brawlers for whatever map you're playing on. So, I'm going to tell you guys the best events and best maps for each brawler, and then I'm also going to tell you what not to push trophies on for each brawler. Alright, so let's get into it. Alright, so let's start out with Shelly. Shelly is a very versatile brawler who's great on any short to medium range maps. She's going to be good anywhere you're going to see a decent amount of tanks as Shelly is a really good tank counter. So to me, the best events for Shelly is Brawl Ball, Showdown, and Smash and Grab. If you're trying to push cups with her, I would stick to those three events. There are a couple bounty maps she is pretty good on, but there's also a couple... Any of the longer range ones where she's really not that good. And I definitely wouldn't play Heist with Shelly. She's pretty good on defense, but she's not good on offense. She's just not well balanced enough for Heist. If I had to pick three maps for Shelly, now there's a bunch she's pretty good on, but I would stick to Hard Rock Mine, Feast or Famine, and Backyard Bull. Those are all going to be three different maps that Shelly is really good on. Okay, and now Nita. Nita is another short to medium range brawler who's going to be good on maps that have a decent amount of walls. She's really good at shooting around corners, so those walls benefit her a lot, not only due to her short range, but she can take advantage of them and hit people that might not be able to hit her. Now, she's really good in smash and grab. That's definitely going to be the best event for her and the main one I would recommend her to push in. Now, because she's one of the stronger brawlers right now, she's actually pretty good in Showdown 2. And you can play her on a couple really short range bounty maps and maybe Brawl Ball somewhat. But I would really just recommend Smash and Grab mostly. If she gets a nerf, she probably won't be that good in Showdown, but she'll still be really good in Smash and Grab. So I would recommend you play her on maps like Hard Rock Mine, Crystal Cavern, or even like Mushroom Cave where she can really take advantage of those walls and corners and get those chip shots and build up her bear and keep people pushed back. Now I definitely wouldn't recommend her playing high. She's going to be really bad in that. In any sort of long range map, she's going to be a no-go. Alright, and now another medium range brawler, Tara. Tara's going to be best in smash and grab and brawl ball. She really likes maps that sort of favor medium range brawlers. So some walls, but not really short range. And she likes to have open spaces so she can chip away at people and then pull multiple people in with her super and deal a ton of overall damage at once. She doesn't have a really fast reload, so she's not great on really short range maps. Um, she's okay in a couple bounty maps, okay in showdown, but the main things I would recommend is going to be Brawl Ball and Smash and Grab. I definitely wouldn't do Heist or any long range maps. Now let's go over Jessie. If you're trying to push Jessie, the best event for her is definitely going to be Smash and Grab. She's really good there. Now she's also pretty good in Brawl Ball right now, but I think once the meta changes, she's not going to be quite as good there. Now you want to stick to maps where she has a good potential to get a lot of bounce shots for her, as usually she gets more damage there, and usually those maps have also good turret placements. So maps like Bone Box, Temple Catacombs, Hard Rock Mine, those are all going to be great options for Jesse. Now you definitely don't want to do anything like Heist. You can maybe do a little bit of Bounty, but probably not recommended. Showdown, it's a little bit possible, but again, not recommended. I would stick to Smash and Grab. And now Brock. Brock's best event type is definitely Bounty. I'd really recommend just pushing there. He's really good at any long range map that has long narrow lanes where he can really take advantage of that range advantage he has over other brawlers. So maps like Star Gulch, Cabbage Patch, Shooting Star, all going to be really good options for Brock. I definitely wouldn't push on Showdown or Smash and Grab. Well, it is sort of possible to push on them. He's definitely not nearly as good there as he is in Bounty. Brock, one of the best Bounty Brawlers, I would definitely push there if you're trying to gain cups with him. All right, and now Colt. If you're trying to push Colt, honestly, his best event type is probably Heist. He's still really good there, but he's also good in Showdown and Bounty. He's not great in Smash and Grab or Brawl Ball anymore. If he gets another buff, he probably will be again. He's one of the most versatile brawlers with a super that breaks through walls and the ability to deal a ton of damage. 
So he's great on any medium range map where he has that ability to deal damage fast. Uh, so maps like uh, Bandit Stash, Kaboom Cannon, and Death Valley are all going to be really good options for him. He doesn't have a lot of maps he's honestly bad on, but some examples would be like Triple Dribble, Deep Hollows, or Mushroom Cave. I wouldn't push on those maps. Honestly, Colt, really versatile. You can push in a lot of different places, but I would really recommend Heist. All right, and now Colt's counterpart, Ricochet. So Ricochet, like Colt, is good to decent on a lot of different places, but his best event is going to be Bounty. Now, that doesn't mean you can't push him in the other events, but that's going to be the one he's most consistent on for the most maps. He's going to be good on any map that has a decent amount of walls, because then he can take advantage of his ability to bounce shots. So make sure to learn those bounce shots on those maps. So some examples are going to be like Temple Ruins, Temple Catacombs, Terracotta Square. He's also good on Hard Rock Mine. Now, like Colt, he's also not very bad on any specific map, but for example, if you're playing Heist with Ricochet, you're definitely going to want a Dynamite. So that's going to be a recommendation is if you're playing Heist, don't play without a Dynamite. But his best event is going to be Bounty. All right, now Piper. I'm sure you can guess this one. Her best event is, of course, Bounty, where she can really get a lot of kills, use her ability to deal damage fast and short bursts. That's going to be her key. Now, of course, you're going to want a long range match for her. She's not going to be great on many short range ones. Um, she's even better with ones that have grass, of course, you can use her star power. So like Star Gold, Shooting Star, Terracotta Square, all going to be good examples for her. Honestly, you can play her on pretty much any bounty map for the most part. Now, you're not going to want to play her on Brawl Ball and definitely not Heist and not Smash and Grab either. Although you can play her on Crystal Cavern, but for the most part, she's not very good or that consistent in Smash and Grab. There's a lot better options. Piper, you're definitely going to want to push in bounty. All right, and now Bo, a high health range brawler. He's going to be best on bounty and smash and grab. He's a pretty good gem carrier, and he's good on the bounty maps that have a lot of grass. So maps like Snake Prairie, Outlaw Camp, he's going to be really good on. But he's also good on maps like Temple Catacombs, where there's good choke points where it makes him easy to get hits, and his mines have a high chance of hitting. So you're going to want maps that have good choke points or a lot of grass, but you're not going to want to play them on... Brawl Ball, you're not going to play him on Heist, and you're not really going to play him on Showdown either. Definitely stick to Bounty with maps that have a good amount of grass or choke points, and Smash and Grab. Alright, now let's get into the tanks, and starting out with El Primo. El Primo, in my opinion, probably the worst of the tanks, but he's also the best one on Brawl Ball. So Brawl Ball, he's definitely going to be a really strong option. He's also pretty good in Showdown, so it's another good place to push cups with him. So maps like... Feast or Famine, Backyard Bull, Pinnel Punt, all going to be great options. Of course, you want any map that favors really short range brawlers. Of course, he has a really short range, so that's a big deal for him. Now, Grass is also key where you can sneak up on people, another big factor. And of course, you don't want to push on maps that favor long range brawlers. And now Bull. So Bull is better in Smash and Grab than El Primo. It's definitely going to be one of Bull's best event types. He's a really good tank there, especially on any map that favors the really short range brawlers. But he's also good in Showdown. He's not particularly bad in any event. You can probably push in any of them if you have a good team comp. But his best ones are going to be Smash and Grab and Showdown. And of course, like El Primo, you want to stick to short range maps that have a good amount of grass or walls. So maps like Feast or Famine, Hard Rock Mine, or Snake Prairie. And of course, you don't really want to be on any long range maps. And now for the last tank, Daryl. Now Daryl's even more versatile than the other tanks because of his super. His super makes him good in Heist, and it also makes him a little bit better in Bounty as well. So he's still really good in Smash and Grab. He's still good in Showdown. You can honestly push almost anything in Daryl right now until he gets a nerf. He's honestly the best brawler in the game right now. That super allows him to be really good on offense and heist. It also allows him to be better in bounty because even on those long range maps, he can super up right next to people and get more kills that way. Unlike the other brawlers, it's just a better advantage for him. So a little bit less weaknesses for Dale. You can push on more places. And I mean, like maps, Feast of Famine, Hard Rock Mine, Snake Prairie, same examples. He's honestly good on a lot of different maps. And again, for the most part, you just want to stay away from the long range maps. And now Mortis. Mortis, of course, is going to be really good in Brawl Ball, but he's also good in Bounty. However, the current meta definitely doesn't favor Mortis. 
Mortis is not great versus tanks, and he's also not great versus the counters to tanks, which you're going to see a lot of because there's so many tanks. So if you're Mortis, you're going to want to try and stick to more medium or long range maps like Star Ghost, but also the Brawl Ball maps like Pinnacle Punt, Backyard Bowl are also going to be really great options for Mortis. So as Mortis, you just don't want to play Heist for sure, and then you don't want to play any maps that are going to be favoring towards tanks. All right, now let's go over Pam. So Pam, of course, her best event type is going to be Smash and Grab. I'd definitely stick to that if you're trying to push cups with her. But specifically, she's going to be good on the maps that have more choke points as this is going to allow her to get a lot more damage as that's going to be the key thing with Pam. It's going to be easy for her to get a lot of healing, but if she can get the extra damage too, that's when she's going to be really good. So maps like Crystal Cavern, Temple Catacombs, and also Deep Hollows are going to be great options for Pam. But try and stay away from um, Brawl Ball and from Heist. Those are going to be two really bad places for Pam. Pam can be usable in Brawl Ball to a degree. But to me, she's just not nearly consistent enough and not as good as the other options. Definitely would recommend Smash and Grab. She's going to be really good there, and that's definitely her best option. And now for Poco. Poco, his best event is also going to be Smash and Grab. He's really good there. He's one of the best brawlers in Smash and Grab right now. He's also pretty good in Brawl Ball, but I would definitely recommend Smash and Grab as his best event. Now, he has a pretty short range, so you're going to want to stick to short or medium range maps. Maps that have a decent amount of walls, uh, for example, like Mushroom Cave, Temple Catacombs, or Deep Hollows. Those all have good funnel points for him to get a good amount of damage and not be limited by his range. So any map that has a good amount of open space where the walls are pretty far apart from each other, you're not really going to want to use Poco and definitely stick to Smash and Grab. All right, and now for the legendary, starting out with Crow. Crow, to me, he's honestly pushable on pretty much every single event type, but his best ones are going to be Heist, and they're going to be Bounty. He's really good on those two events. Any map that has a good amount of walls where he's not limited by his range are going to be his best maps, but he's pretty much usable on basically every map, almost. So with Crow, the best examples of maps for him is going to be like Kaboom Canyon, Star Gulch and even like Temple Ruins. There's a lot of good places to push Crow with though. The only place I wouldn't really recommend is Brawl Ball. He's not bad there, but with so many good options for Crow, I would stick to other events like Bounty or like Heist. And now for Spike. Spike is going to be good on any of the maps that throwers are good on. So he really likes walls. He's great at throwing around corners, throwing around walls, and he's really good in Smash and Grab, and he's also good in Bounty. Now, for map recommendations, I would say maps like Temple Ruins, Temple Catacombs, Crystal Cavern, and like Death Valley are all great options for Spike. I really just wouldn't push in Heist. That's going to be really bad for him. Or any sort of long-range map. Spike doesn't do great on long-range maps. He has low health, and his range really isn't that great, even though his spikes go pretty far. He's best when he's hitting people directly, and he's great on medium-range maps with a good amount of walls. And now for the last two, the throwers. Now, of course, throwers are good on any map that has a decent amount of walls where they can take advantage, of course, of their ability to throw over them. So Barley is really good in Heist and in Showdown. And he's also good on a couple different smash and grab maps. And he's okay in Brawl Ball. He's not really bad in anything per se, but his best ones are definitely going to be Heist and Showdown. So maps like Mushroom Cave, Deep Hollows, those are two really good smash and grab maps where you can really take advantage of those walls. And then Death Valley and Stormy Plains are also really good options. There's honestly a good amount of maps where throwers are good on, but those are going to be the ones I really recommend. So, of course, you're not going to want to play on maps that don't have many walls for them or are really long range oriented. Throwers are going to struggle a little bit more on those maps. And now, last but not least, Dynamite. And honestly, my recommendations for Dynamite are going to be pretty much the same as with Barley. They're two really similar brawlers. Of course, there's maps where it really favors throwers. Good amount of walls, medium range, not really close range, not too long range. Those are going to be the best maps for them. It's going to be the same. He's really good in Heist. He's good in Showdown. He's decent on some Smash and Grab maps. You can use him a little bit in Brawl Ball, but he's not that great. Those are going to be my main recommendations for those guys. Alright guys, those are going to be all my tips on how to get each brawler to 500 trophies. Now hopefully I'll do another pushing tips video sometime soon. But that's going to be it for today's video. Let me know in the comments below what brawler you guys are struggling with to push up the most. 
For me personally, it's Mortis. I just never play him. I don't know. I really struggle with him, and I don't play Brawl Ball that often, so that's probably the biggest reason why. But all right, guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed, and I will catch you later. You gotta have that time where you just like disconnect from the, from the scene, just the, the, the race. Like, and it's a race I've created in my head, you know? But you have to step away from it.